Uh, and Bill, uh, having read your book, uh, Red Notice, quite a few years ago at this point, highly recommended for anybody trying to understand what's going on even right now and what's going on in terms of uh, the way Putin thinks about things. I guess that's where I'd start with you. Given your experience and what you know, what are your expectations uh, for what Putin will continue to do in terms of how they prosecute the war in Ukraine? Well, my, my experience with Putin has been over the last 12 years trying to get uh, justice for my murdered lawyer, Sergei Magnitsky. And every time we had a success in our campaign of um, exposing them, of, of creating consequences for the Russian government, Putin escalated. Um, escalated even in, in situations where the escalation hurt Russia um, more than it hurt anybody else. And so, and, and we're seeing exactly that pattern of behavior right now. And so, uh, sadly, every, every good thing that the Ukrainians do to fight off the Russians just leads to more and more Russian escalation in the future. And, and so, I mean, I, I, I don't foresee a situation where we're going to just be able to sit on the sidelines um, militarily when hundreds of thousands of Ukrainian civilians are being killed in, in effectively uh, a modern-day Holocaust. It's just, you know, it's like it, it's the equivalent of, of sitting and watching as the as the Germans killed Jewish people during the Holocaust. This is going to get to be so awful that we, we're going to have to do something more than we're currently doing. Yeah, uh, well, that obviously is a key question, as is the possibility that there's any pressure that can be brought to bear internally on Putin to stop him. Um, I mean, again, given your experience, I'm curious as to what your thoughts are, particularly as it, as it pertains to the oligarchs and others who we consider to be have some power within Russia. Well, that's a great thought and something that I wish were possible and true. But, but the reality is that, that um, all the oligarchs exist at the pleasure of Vladimir Putin. At any point, he can uh, make them not oligarchs, take away their money, put them in jail, or kill them. They're all desperately afraid of him. He's truly a, a, seen by everybody as being a murderous psychopath. They're all so scared of him. I can't imagine a scenario, no matter how bad we're hurting them, that they're going to rise up and take him out and, and install somebody else. It's just very unrealistic. I think the reason why we're sanctioning the oligarchs is because they have money that they hold for Vladimir Putin, and they have money that Vladimir Putin can ask for if he needs it, and he needs a lot of money right now. And so as part of their, our economic blockade of Russia, this is really an important part of the whole, uh, whole process. Bill, on that point of uh, Putin needing money and, and maybe just how much and how urgently, uh, this, the sanctions have only been in place for, you know, three weeks or not even that. Uh, so clearly they were going to take time to maybe change any behavior. But uh, what do you think the effectiveness is, even with the dramatic sanctions among countries and companies, that he still has most of the markets open for energy exports, even if at, at discounted prices? And it's not a particularly levered economy, right? There's not a lot of external uh, Russian debt. I just wonder how long you think economically uh, the country can withstand this. Well, I mean, we, we've seen uh, other dictators like um, Kim Jong-un, who is running a sort of permit economy for many years. I mean, it, anything is possible in these, in these dictatorships. But what we're worried about right now is how do we degrade his financial ability to execute this war? And this war is extremely expensive. This is costing billions of dollars a day and billions of dollars a day that he can't afford after some period of time. The estimates are that the Russian GDP is going to contract by more than 30 percent. Um, they've been, now been cut off from their central bank reserves. And yes, it's an unlevered economy, um, but they have no, no ability to get any leverage other than possibly from the Chinese. But I don't think the Chinese could even lend them the amount of money that they need. And so they're, they're definitely getting squeezed right now. Are they going to be squeezed to the point where, where they're going to stop this war in the, in the near future? Probably no. But um, eventually, they're going to run out of gas. They're just not, literally not going to have enough money to do this war if we keep the sanctions up and if we keep on tightening the news.